The Ali Marco first. Good morning, everyone. I'm uh, Marco Leali. I'm not an unschooling mother. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I have been unschooled for the biggest part of my life, and I still consider myself an unschooler after a brief um, school experience. Well, I think we are all here because we believe in a, in a way that our social system right now is in a time of deep crisis in many of its aspects, in almost all of its aspects, I would personally say. And we all agree that uh, the institutions that should educate people are very important, certainly, in uh, solving, probably even in creating a lot of these problems. It is an arduous task that, that, we, that we give to often overwhelmed institutions simply because the, the task is really overwhelming. There are a lot of people that have to be educated. That's, that's not news. Um, fact is, our system, which we rely on right now, is probably not really fit, not really made to uh, um, bring real solutions, real uh, education to people as it is right now, because it is not, it doesn't promote a natural way of learning. The, uh, the way that children learn right now at, in school and in other institutions is built on the very monotonous cadence of modern day adult life with everything it brings. First of all, there are um, goals to, to the education, which normally results in high grades or, or anything of that kind, whereas goals are not, not useful in any kind of education, I believe. The whole education happens in a top-down manner. There is a, a teacher and there are uh, pupils that have to be taught. There is not really a debate going on knowledge-wise. Uh, it, it's more as a, a situation of, I know everything, I have to educate you. That's not very democratic, by the way. Um, children are given preconceived tasks that they have to solve in preconceived ways, which, are, um, which doesn't foster their, uh, their strengths, their uh, creativity, their solution um, um, finding process, which doesn't help certainly the parliamentary skills, because uh, when you just simply have to execute, you can't decide what you have to do. This doesn't help you for, in any way for uh, a democratic lifestyle and a democratic openness to everything. The origins of the system are certainly difficult to trace back in time, but certain studies see the origins of this in the late 19th century Prussian schools, or again in late 19th century um, industrial revolution schools which had to produce law-abiding and subservient citizens for military life or for uh, work use. So developing a system to build young adults more than uh, educating children somehow. This is not a natural way, this is not a democratic way of uh, education. Because our minds, in large part, still function with a hunter-gatherer uh, uh, mode. And um, we can see that in hunter-gatherer societies that we can still observe today, that children spend most of the time unobserved by adults without any tasks that were given to them by any adult and completely free to manage their time according to their own wishes and especially their own needs. What usually results out of this is that they play. They play, play completely free. And this is very important because they don't play just for fun. They play because they want to they try to understand the world that surrounds them because they play the world that surrounds them. They see activities and things that happen around them that they just simply reproduce with a, a smaller scale of risks certainly, um, if something goes wrong. This means a lot of things, to be honest. This means, first of all, that, especially in social play, 
they are left, they are trusted to make their own decisions, to make, to take their own risks, and have their own responsibilities from from a very very early age. This means that they can uh, manage the time however they uh, they feel best. There is no adult which says now you have to do this or that or whatever. This means that they have to develop their skills, their decision-making skills, first of all, they have to have a strong opinion in the, when it comes to deciding what there is to do. They have to defend their opinion and find, most importantly, a compromise between other opinions, which is basically just the mode that happens also in, the, in most modern day parliaments that should be the foundation of a democratic society. There's also a lot of solidarity, usually in, this, in these games, a lot of inclusiveness, because clearly, and I'd like to speak with my own experience in this, um, you have to be open, you have to be uh, controlled somehow, to control yourself when you're playing freely. And this is where my experience com comes in, because I still play with uh, little children, and what usually comes out of this is a uh, sword fight. And, well, clearly, when I measure myself in a sword fight with a four-year-old or five-year-old, I'm usually the strongest, <laughs> because I'm bigger and, and, and just physically stronger. What results in this is that, obviously, the, the younger one has to kind of learn, uh, explore its, uh, its skills and its knowledge, and me, the older one, probably stronger one, I have to learn to control my strength. So I can, again, as it was said before, make the, ch the child feel safe so that the child can learn to, to put up against, uh, against what's coming to him and, most importantly, to explore its skills. So this means there is no competition in free play, basically, because I'm not trying to beat him, he's, or she, is not trying to beat me. We're just playing, we're just doing uh, something because we like it, because it's fun, because we both see opportunities to build our own minds to, to a greater level through it. This is very important because in uh, standardized modern day schooling, <laughs> competition is very strong. Uh, I would say that it, it's too strong. There's almost only competition, especially when we're talking about grades, because grades seem to be the, the main goal in, uh, in, uh, for te teachers, children, and for uh, adults in school. Again, there are a lot of uh, decisions to be made in free play with everything this implies, with most importantly the act of finding a compromise between different uh, different ideas, finding a solution to uh, that puts everyone on the same level. Because if in free play, if one player quits, even if it's the weakest link, the game just simply doesn't go on. Um, which means which means that the fun simply stops. So everyone is at the same level. Everyone has the same importance to decide things. If one is not satisfied, you have to find a solution to this problem. You, you just can't exclude him and, uh, and let him be. That's just simply not possible. That this doesn't happen. So I would say that this is a very, very democratic way of going about. I would even say that it's the most democratic activity that humans can engage in, because at least me personally, I can't think of any other uh, situation for humans where these democratic concepts are applied in such a strong and spontaneous uh, way. There might be some, some musical situations or theater situations in uh, adult life, but for example in work or at school or anywhere else, these principles simply do not apply. I would say that the free play is and remains the best training for uh, a democratic society and an open society. Um, it trains um, what the skills that are necessary for democracy, 
it trains inclusiveness, it trains openness, uh, without ever uh, really teaching anything in the in a uh, let's say normal standardized sense. And it lets us us as children, but even as adults, because even adults can play. It lets us uh, practice democracy at the highest level. So I think that it can help us all build a more open, more democratic society, more free society in many ways, for the benefit of all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.